Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Let me introduce myself first of all, for those of you who haven't maybe attended one of our webinars before. So my name is Deborah Ashby and I'm an IT trainer specializing in Microsoft products. So I basically design, facilitate and deliver training both online and in the classroom. And as you can probably hear from my accent, I am based in London in the United Kingdom. So let's get on to the subject that we're gonna be looking at today. What are pivot tables? Why are they useful? You may have come across pivot tables before. You might even have been asked to put a pivot table together. And if you've never done one before, then it isn't particularly obvious how you would put one together or even why they can be useful. And I will say that with pivot tables, as I mentioned, they are brilliant if you would need to analyze a large data set. And if you've already opened that file that I've sent you, you can see that that is quite a large data set of just very generic sales data. It's not real data. They're not real companies. I literally made all of it up myself. So um, we're not using any live data, but that is a good example of a large sample data set. So we use pivot tables when we want to extract meaning from our numbers. So by looking at just the data in the spreadsheet, it's very hard for us to maybe say how many sales per company we've got without maybe doing a formula or using a pivot table. And by far, pivot tables are my preferred method as opposed to using formulas. They're just a lot more flexible and dynamic. And we use pivot tables to really organize our data and present data so that it's easy for other people to interpret so people can see exactly what it is that they're interested in. And leading on from that, once we've created our pivot table to analyze our data, we can then make it even easier for people and we can make it really visual by displaying that pivot table data in a pivot chart. And we're going to look at that as well again today. And then if you want to really take it on a stage further, we can start doing things like creating interactive dashboards to display key metrics. And if you've never sort of put together a dashboard before, we're definitely not going to have time to cover all of it in this session today because that is like a topic in its own right. But a dashboard is basically just a series of different charts and different ways to represent data that makes it really easy for stakeholders, CEOs to kind of zero in on the information that's of interest interest to them. So that's sort of why we use pivot tables. So but let's open up the data set. Oh, sorry, before we get onto that, let's go through the agenda for today so you know what you're in for. So we've basically just discussed what pivot tables are and why they're useful. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to open that data set that I've sent through because I just want you to understand what you're looking at before we actually get into analyzing it. I find people often miss out that step and they just present data. And if it's the first time that you're seeing it, it can be a bit sort of confusing and all over the place. So we'll go through each of the columns so we understand. We're then going to talk a little bit about the importance of Excel tables. Now, Excel tables are different to pivot tables. The main reason being that Excel tables are more static than a pivot table. A pivot table is something we can move around and analyze in different ways, whereas an Excel table is basically a table. But they are one of the most useful things in Excel, and I always use them if I'm going to create a pivot table. So we'll talk a bit about tables. We'll then create our first pivot table. Very exciting. And then I'll show you the most important part, which is how you can pivot the fields around, move things around so you can just analyze your data in lots of different ways in about two seconds. So it's very, very simple. We're going to talk a little bit about grouping while we're going through pivoting the fields. I'm just going to show you some other things that you can do with pivot tables, basically. So some of the most important things that you might want to do, how we can aggregate our data or change the way that we're aggregating our data, whether we're summing or counting or working out the average, things like that. I'm going to show you how you can show values as something else, so maybe a percentage of the total, things like that. We're going to take a look at how we can apply number formatting in pivot tables because it does differ a little bit than when you're just applying number formatting to regular cells in Excel. So I'll show you that. I'm going to show you how you can toggle on subtotals and grand totals, change the report layout, 
how we can jazz up our pivot table, add a bit of color and apply a pivot table style. And then we'll move on to the section about creating pivot charts. So we're going to take our pivot table data and we're going to put it into a really nice visual chart. I'll show you a little bit about some of the things you can do to format your pivot charts and just make them a little bit easier to read and just look a bit nicer, I guess. And then we're going to add some interactivity by adding something called slicers. If you've never come across slicers before, they're a really wonderful way of making it super easy for anybody who's looking at your data to interact with that data without messing up what you've already done. And then finally, at the end, a really important part, I'm going to show you how you can very quickly update all of your pivot tables and all of your pivot charts with the click of one button. Because the data, if you take the sales data that I've just sent you, data in general doesn't stay static. I might add more sales figures to that data the next month. So I want to be able to have a quick way of updating all of the pivot tables that I've created with that new data with the click of one button. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Now, hopefully that will take us all the way through to an hour. I will try not to overrun as I normally do. Um, so let's get going. So I'm going to minimize down. You should be able to see my desktop by now. And I am just going to open up the store sales data. All right. So this is the spreadsheet that I sent you guys. So this should look exactly the same as what you have. Notice at the bottom, I have two tabs. I have one called store data that I'm currently on. I have another one called July data. Now, don't worry about the July data tab too much at the moment. We're going to use this at the end when we update our data. Our main focus at the moment is going to be on this tab, the store data tab. So let's just take a moment just to look at our data and understand exactly what we're looking at here. So basic generic sales data, we have the date in column A, and I've basically taken, or this, is, this data is set to take a reading on the first of every month, and the data is about six months worth of data. We then have the store in column B, so this is data for two different stores, Computech and Microworld. We then have the town that that store is located in. These are towns in the UK. We have a store code. We have the country. We have the manager of the store. We have the category that that um, item belongs to. So you can see here, these are electrical stores. They're selling electrical goods. And then the amount of sales. So this is the data we're going to be analyzing. Now, if you want to quickly see how many lines of data, if we press the shortcut key, control down arrow on our keyboard, that's going to jump us all the way down to the last row of our data. So we can see here that this is a reasonably large data set. We have 21,576 rows of data. And you can see there with the date, it goes to June 2019. So I have six months worth of data here. Control up arrow to jump me back up to the first row in the table. Now, my data has column headings. This is everything that we have here in row one. And I would advise you, if you're going to use pivot tables, you need to have um, column headings in your data. Very important. Otherwise, things just get extremely confusing. Now, the data set that we're using here is what we call a clean data set. And what I mean by that is that I've already tidied it up. I've applied formatting where necessary. I've removed duplicates. I've removed blank rows. Anything that looked slightly strange, I've removed out of this data already. And I was going to leave all of these things in and show you how to clean the data set. And then I realized that we have a webinar in a couple of months that's all about cleaning data. So I thought, I'm not going to do that now. We'll leave it for that webinar. If that's something that you're interested in, so maybe you're somebody who receives data from other people, or maybe you download it from external systems, and that data comes into Excel and it's not perfect, you have to do a lot of tidying up to get it to look right, that cleaning data session is going to be one for you because you're going to see loads and loads of shortcuts on how to do that quickly. So we're starting with a clean data set. Now, the first thing I always do, as I mentioned at the beginning, is I always, before I put my data into a pivot table, I always make sure that I format my raw data set as an Excel table, which is different to a pivot table. The reason being that 
Excel tables have the ability to auto expand. So if I was to add any more data onto the bottom of this data set, it's going to essentially become part of the Excel table, which makes updating all of the pivot tables a lot easier later on. So you'll see exactly what I mean by that when we get to that section. But for the time being, just remember, put your data in a table. You won't regret it. So to quickly put our data in a table, all we need to do here is click anywhere within our data and press the keyboard shortcut Control T. That's the shortcut for creating a table. Alternatively, if you don't particularly like keyboard shortcuts, you could go to the Home tab and click the Format as Table button over here in the Styles drop down. So I've just taken this out of the table in case you didn't see that process. Control T to put our data into an Excel table. Yes, my table has headers. Let's click on OK. So now we have our table design contextual ribbon at the top. And I always recommend that you give your table a name. It just makes it a lot more meaningful. So in the first group here where we have properties, I'm going to call this sales data. And it's worth noting that with these table names, you either have to have, if, you, if you've got two words like I have just here, you need to make them all one word or you need to separate the words with an underscore. You can't have any spaces in your table names. So we have our table named. We're now ready to create our pivot table. And there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can do it from the insert ribbon. We have a pivot table button just here. But I generally tend to find that I'm normally already on the table design ribbon. And because I'm already on this ribbon, I might as well use one of the options that we have, which is this one, summarize with pivot table. So let's click on this. You can see here it says select the table or range. So it's picked up the data that I want to use, basically all of the data around where I'm clicked. And I can see my table name in here. I can then choose where I need to place this pivot table. So do I want to place it on a new worksheet, an existing worksheet, or do I want to add it to the data model? Now, this bottom option just here, if you want to know more about that, that's actually what next month's webinar is about. So if you want to learn how to consolidate multiple tables of data and create a big pivot table, that is the one you want to attend. Now, in this lesson, we're going to put our pivot table on a new worksheet. And I highly recommend you put pivot tables on new worksheets separate to your raw data. So let's click on OK. Now, notice at the bottom here, we have a new worksheet. It's called Sheet 2. At the moment, we are going to rename it. And we're currently looking at a blank pivot table report. And then over on the right hand side, now I'm just going to rearrange this because this isn't how it will look when you go to it. It will look like this. OK, this is our pivot table fields pane. Now, notice what we have in here. If we take a look in this top area, we have all of the column headings from our raw data sets. We have date, store, town, store codes, so on and so forth. So that is why it's so important to let the pivot table know that your data contains column headings because it's going to pull those in and use them as pivot table fields. And that's the terminology when we're working with pivot tables. These are referred to as fields. Underneath, we have four currently blank areas, filters, columns, rows and values. And basically, all we do to create our pivot table is we drag and drop different fields into different areas underneath to build our pivot table report. And it's really worth knowing or it's really worth looking at your data and thinking about what exactly it is that you want to extract from your data. What are you interested in? So maybe your manager has come to you and he wants you to pull out from this data how many sales have been generated for Computech or how many sales have been generated by a specific manager. So working out exactly what you're interested in is really going to help you when it comes to how you organize your fields. Now, as I mentioned, this is sort of the standard way that your pivot table fields and your little filter areas down here are displayed. But I know that some people prefer to display them side by side. So you can see we have a little cog icon just here. If I click the drop down, we can change it to fields, sections and areas, sections side by side. So let's click this and it just displays them in a slightly different way. Some people find this easier, but it is entirely up to you.
I just want to check in that you can all still hear me. Let me switch back and make sure. Can you all hear me? <laughs> I'm going to check back in the panel. Yes. Okay. I'm now paranoid that people can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, guys, thank you very much. We shall carry on. <laughs> All right. So now we have our fields. Let's start to construct our pivot table. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here, we'll start off with something really basic. So we are going to analyze this data. And what we want to pull out of it is just the total amount of sales per store. So remember, we only have two stores, Computech and Microworld. So let's start arranging our fields. So I'm going to grab the store field and I'm just going to drag and drop it into this rows area. Now, when I let go, check out the pivot table report. It now puts both of those stores into the rows. And because I want to see the amount of sales, I'm going to grab the sales field and we're going to drag that down into the values area. Would you take a look at that? Within two seconds, I can basically tell my manager exactly how many sales we've generated for Computech. If I wanted to go a stage further and maybe wanted to remove Microworld from this, I could use a little filter drop down and just select Computech to see just that information that's of interest to me. So really nice and straightforward. That is a basic pivot table. OK, really easy. We're just dragging and dropping fields. Now, what about if we take this store field that we currently have in rows and drag and drop it into columns instead? What does that do to our report? Well, it just organizes it in a slightly different way. We now have the stores running down in the columns. So we have some sales and we can still see the information. And then we have the grand total at the end. So this is what we call pivoting the fields, which is basically just moving fields around to different areas to perform different types of analysis. Let's do another type of analysis. Maybe I now want to see which manager is performing the best and generating the most sales. So this time I don't really need the store information so I can get rid of this field. And to remove a field from any of these areas, you simply drag it outside until you see that red cross and let go. I can now add the manager field instead and I'm going to drop that into rows. So now take a look at my report. I have all of the managers listed here and I have how many sales in monetary value, not the count, how many sales they've generated. If I was to drag manager into columns, again, it just displays that in a different way. And for this type of information, that's not particularly useful. I would definitely have that in rows as opposed to columns. Let's do another type of analysis. Let's drag manager outside again. Let's drag, uh, this time I'm going to drag store. Uh, no, sorry, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to drag town into the rows area. So now I can see the amount of sales generated by each town in the UK. So this is doing a very basic analysis, but this is a pivot table. OK, that is pretty much all there is to it. Obviously, we're going to get a little bit more complex, but at its very basic level, you've created yourself a pivot table to extract data. OK, let's take it up a notch because so far we've just been adding one field into each of these. Let me show you what happens when you start adding multiple fields. So I'm going to remove the town from the rows. And this time I'm going to drag, let's drag the category into rows. I'm also going to grab the manager and drag that into rows as well, but I'm going to place it underneath category. When I let go, take a look at the analysis. We can now see our data broken down by category and manager. So I have the category at the top then the manager, and I can see how many sales they've generated. We then have the next category, then all the managers and the sales for that category. All right, so it's a different type of analysis. And when we have it in this layout, we can actually see the subtotals at the top here. So the subtotal for the cameras category is this number just here. Now, I'm somebody who doesn't like to read subtotals at the top. I very much like to have subtotals at the bottom. And I'm going to show you in a moment how you can simply move this, subto move this subtotal down if you prefer it to look that way. We'll do that in a moment. 
Now, what about if I go back to this rows area and I rearrange these so that manager is above category? Let's just drag it above, let go. I now have it organized by manager, then the category underneath. So just different ways that we can look at this data simply by pivoting these fields and moving them all around. Now, what about this filters area at the top here? We haven't put anything into there so far. Well, what we can do is maybe if I wanted to grab the store field, I can grab it, drop it into filters. And if we take a look at the pivot table report, I now have this filter area at the top. So if I'm only interested in this analysis for Computech, I can select it and it's going to apply a filter. So now I'm just seeing the sum of sales broken down by manager and category for the store Computech. All right, I can click the filter again. I can put it back to all, whatever I want to do. Okay, so really nice and straightforward. You can have a lot of fun with this and move things around and get all types of analysis out of your data. Let's do something slightly different now. I'm going to remove the filter, so let's take that out. And I'm going to remove the manager. Let's just leave category and the sum of sales. Now, what about if I want to break this information down by date instead? So I'm going to grab the date and I'm going to drag it into rows and I'm going to place it above category. You can now see it's breaking it down in a slightly different way. Now, this looks a little bit weird because all of my data in my raw data set, I took a reading of our sales figures on the first of every month. So you can see here it says January and then it says one Jan and then one Feb, one Mar, because that's when I took the reading. So those are all of the dates in my raw data set. Also notice that even though I moved the date field to rows, notice that it's actually split it out into months and date for me. So it's basically looked at my raw data, it's looked at the date column, and it's broken it down in a way that it thinks I might be interested in. Now, in this actual example, this isn't particularly helpful. I'm not, I know that all of my readings were taken on the 1st of January. I'm not really interested in having 1st of Jan, 1st of Feb in here. I just want it to say Jan, Feb, March. So what I could do then is I could remove the, I think I need to remove the months one out of here. No, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Hang on one second, let me put that back. The date field out of here, and then it's going to break it down by January, February, March. OK, so just be aware of that. Sometimes when you are dragging dates into rows or columns, it will look at the date and it will try and break it down for you. Sometimes it will break it down into quarters, sometimes into months. Sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes it's not. So just remove accordingly. OK, so lots of different ways that you can analyze your data. Now, because we have this ordered by our months and then we have our categories, notice next to the months, we have these little collapsible menus. So I can collapse up January, collapse up February, and I can also expand these out. So those kind of help me really zero in on maybe one particular month that I'm interested in. OK, so don't forget about those. Now, while we're on the subject, when we're clicked inside a pivot table, as we are now, notice up on the ribbons, we have two new contextual ribbons, pivot table analyze and also the design ribbon. So everything that we need to format our pivot table, do different things with our pivot table, we're going to find on one of these two ribbons. Now, if we take a look over on the Pivot Table Analyze ribbon all the way over in the Show group, notice that the middle one there, the plus minus buttons, is toggled on. And that's why I can see these collapsible and expandable buttons next to the months. But if I just didn't need those and I wanted to remove them, I could toggle those off and it's going to get rid of them just there. Also, a really important thing to note, because I get this question all the time, is if your field list disappears or if you accidentally close it down, so if I click on the cross and that goes away, people are like, oh, how do I get my field list back? Click in the pivot table, pivot table analyze, in the show group, field list. Click this, it's going to pop that pane back open. OK, so lots of little tips and tricks just there. 
Now I'm going to rearrange my pivot table very slightly. Let's remove the months and I'm going to leave it on just the category and also the sum of sales because we're going to start to talk about value field settings, how we can aggregate our data in different ways. Now, currently, this pivot table is just showing me the sum of all sales. So it's aggregating the data for all of the cameras that have been sold, all of the memory cards, regardless of where they were sold or anything. So I can see the actual total sales for each of these categories. Now, it might be that I want to see the count or the average or something completely different. So this is where I can go in and change how I'm summarizing or aggregating this data. So by default, it's done, a, it's done a sum, but maybe I want to see a count, the actual number of cameras that have been sold as opposed to the monetary value. So what we can do here is we can right click in sum of sales and we can go down to value field settings. And we can then choose how we want to aggregate this data. So maybe instead of sum, I want to count. I'm going to change it to count of sales, and now I can see the count as opposed to the sum. Another way that we could do this instead of right clicking over here is if we're working in our pivot table fields where we have the values area, we can click the drop down and we can access value field settings from there. And I could maybe do an average of all of the sales instead. OK, so we can aggregate our data in different ways. Now, what if I want to see the sum of all of these sales, but I also want to see the count? How would we do that? Well, I'm going to change this one back to sum so that we have our sum of sales. But what if I want to have another column that shows me the count? Well, this is really simple. All we need to do is grab the sales field again, exactly the same field and drag and drop it to the values area. It's going to give us another column. And of course, by default, it's going to do a sum. So we're getting exactly the same data as the previous column. But you might have already worked this out. We can very quickly right click in this column and we can choose to sh uh, sorry, summarize the values by the count instead. So now I have the sum of sales, but I also have the count in the same pivot table. I can then change these headings to make them a little bit more meaningful. So sum of sales is OK. I don't really want this to say count of sales too. Whoops. I'm going to click in the cell, double click, and we're going to take the two off the end just to change the title of that field. Now, notice as soon as I did that, the pivot table kind of jumped and rearranged itself. It collapsed up its columns. And you'll notice that if you start doing things like widening, widening columns so that you can see the data a bit better, when you change the fields around, or even if you do a refresh of your pivot table, these are going to jump back to how they were originally. So let me show you a quick example of that. If I go up to refresh, and I'm just going to say refresh all, it's going to jump back to auto width, basically. So the width of the longest item in the cell. So if you have specific widths that you want to keep your pivot table at, you need to make sure that you change that in your pivot table options. And then when you start moving fields around or refreshing pivot tables, the column widths aren't going to change. Sometimes that can be a real pain if you've spent ages making a pivot table look really nice and getting those column widths exactly as you want them. As soon as you change something in the pivot table, it just collapses back up to how it was originally. So to retain these column widths, we need to go to the pivot table analyze ribbon. We're going to go across to options. And in here, right towards the bottom, we have an option here, auto fit column widths on update. So I want to deselect this because I want to keep it as the column widths that I've set. So let's click on OK. And now if I was to refresh this pivot table, those column widths aren't going to change. OK, so just a little tip there, which I see very few people point out, and it can be really valuable. Now, another thing that we can do once we've sort of done this summary just here is that we can um, show our values as something else. So maybe I want to show the sum of sales for each of the categories as a percentage of the grand total. So what I'm going to do is I want this to be in another column. So I'm going to grab another sales field, drag it down to values, 
Of course, by default, it's going to do a sum of sales too. But straight away, I'm going to right click and we're going to say, sh uh, sorry, show values as, and then I have various different options in here. So I want to show my values as a percentage of the grand total. And I'm going to rename this field at the top here to say percentage of grand total. Like so. So now I can actually see the actual percentage of total sales that the camera sales make up. OK, so this is another really nice way that we can analyze it. And we have lots of other things within this show values ad that we can do. So we can show running totals. We can show percentages of the column total, lots of different calculations that we can perform. OK, so just keep adding sales fields and changing them to show exactly what you're interested in. All right. So really nice and straightforward. Now, I'm going to undo some of that work that we've just done. I'm going to remove some of these fields. So I'm just going to take it back to just having the sum of sales. So let's remove percentage of grand total and also the count of the sales because we're going to move on to talking about number formatting. So, so far we haven't spoken about number formatting. And if you take a look at the sums, sum of sales column in our pivot table, currently our values don't have any formatting. We don't have any commons, uh, commas. We don't have any decimal places. We don't have any currency symbols. Now, the way that you apply number formatting in a pivot table is slightly different to if you're just applying number formatting in an Excel spreadsheet. What we don't do is we don't select our data just here and then go to home and select our number format. We don't do it that way. What we do instead is we click within our data, we right click, we go down to value field settings and we choose number format from here. And then we can go in and choose the formatting that we want. So I'm just going to choose, let's go for currency formatting. I'm going to take the decimal places down to zero. And as we've got so many people on the call today from the US, I'm going to leave it on the dollar symbol. Let's click on OK and OK again. And it's going to apply that number formatting. OK, so Remember to apply it that way as opposed to selecting the cells. The reason why we don't select the cells and apply the number formatting is if those pivot table fields then move, if we rearrange our pivot table fields, the formatting doesn't carry with it. It's applied to the cell. So you're going to get sort of some numbers with formatting and some numbers without. OK, so that's why we do it in a slightly different way. Let's move on to taking a look at some of the ways that we can change the way that our pivot table report looks. Now, for this, I'm going to add in another field. Let's go for manager again. I'm going to drop that into rows. Uh, I think I'm going to put manager above category, actually. Let's organize it like that. All right, because I want to talk to you about subtotals and grand totals. I briefly touched on this at the beginning of the session. When you have your data organized like this, so multiple fields within rows, you're going to see subtotals at the top by default. Now, if you don't like this, if you're someone who prefers to read your subtotals at the bottom, I am one of those people, then we can change that. And we do this on the, I think it's on the design ribbon. Yes, the design ribbon at the top here. Now, the first group here is the layout group. And we have a subtotals drop down. So we can choose to turn our subtotals off entirely, or we can show them at the bottom or at the top of the group. So I'm going to switch mine to show at the bottom of the group, and I can now see the subtotal for Felicity Chambers. OK, so this is entirely personal preference. You might prefer them to be at the top, or you might just want to turn them off altogether. Entirely up to you. Now, the same thing applies for your grand totals. You're always going to have, and I have quite a lot of data here, a grand total right at the bottom. So this is just a total of everything in that column of the pivot table. If you like that, you can keep it on. If you want to turn it off, you have various different options here. So you could turn it off for rows and columns, which will turn it off entirely. And I will say that if you do plan on putting your pivot table or putting it into a pivot chart, it's always good to turn off the grand total because you don't really want to include most of the time a grand total in your visual analysis. So I'm going to turn this off for rows and columns like so. So very, very simple. What else can we do in this little group? 
Well, we can change the report layout. So by default, I'm showing my pivot table in compact form, but I could choose to show it in outline form, which gives me a slightly different way of viewing it. It puts the manager name into its own separate column as to kind of putting it in the same column as the category. I can change it to tabular form. Again, something very slightly different. You might find this easier to read. Or I can go back to compact form. Now, if I have this in tabular form, I might want to repeat the manager labels all the way down through all of these rows. Sometimes that can be quite helpful. We can choose to repeat all item labels, which is going to put this into each row. Now, for me, that looks a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> I'm going to remove those item labels and put it back to compact view. But just remember, you've got different layouts for your report. Choose one that's most appropriate for your data. We can even add in blank rows. So if I want to insert a blank line, I can do that. It just gives a little bit of separation between each item in your pivot table. Again, just makes it a bit easier to read. So think about all of those things when you're putting together your pivot table. Now, just a couple of things related to pivot table styles. There's nothing too complex here. Again, if we work up on the design ribbon, we have a big old group here, which opens up a gallery of different types of formatting, different styles that we can apply to our pivot tables. And we can hover over and get a nice live preview as to what each of these look like. So go through these, choose one that appeals to you. I'm just going to choose this one because I really like the color rose. Why not? that will quickly apply to your pivot table. Once you've applied a style, you can then customize that style further by turning on these different pivot table style options. So if I click on banded rows, that's just gonna put some lines running across again, which makes this a bit easier to read. I can do various different things. You can see as I toggle this off and on, it removes the uh, formatting from the column header. I can do the same with the row headers, or I can choose to have banded columns, things like that. And these pivot ta table style options work slightly differently depending on which style you've selected. So it's always worth selecting a style, having a play around with these until you get your pivot table into a really nice, easy to read format. So that's kind of how pivot tables work. You know, you can get more complex, you can delve in, you can get a bit more advanced with different things, but that is basically the concept behind them. Now, one thing I would say is that if you are going to be creating lots of different types of analysis, so maybe you want to do um, you want to do what we've done here. So we're summarizing by manager and category. But maybe then you want to just see a breakdown of the sales by the store. You might want to create multiple different pivot tables. Now, the easiest way to do that for me is to simply copy the current pivot table. And when I say copy, I just mean copy the entire worksheet. Now, before we do that, I'm going to rename this worksheet so that it accurately represents what's on this worksheet. So let's right click, let's rename it. And I always name my worksheets if they contain a pivot table, PVT. That's my standard naming convention. And then what is this showing? Well, this is a summary by manager and category. So I'm just going to say man, oops, I can't type today, underscore cat. I have an idea as to what this pivot table represents. Now, if I wanted to do another pivot table, all I would do is copy the entire worksheet. And you can do that very quickly by holding down control and then just dragging and dropping the tab. It's going to create a copy. We're going to have the pivot table on here and we can then rearrange this pivot table to show what we want in the second analysis. So maybe I just want to analyze by store on this particular pivot table. And maybe I want to turn on grand totals for this particular one like so. Maybe I want to change the style of this pivot table. I can do that. So now very quickly, I've managed to create two different types of analysis using the same pivot table. I haven't had to go back to the raw data and start all over again. I then simply right click and rename this tab. This one might be called pivot underscore store uh, underscore sales, something like that. And I would carry on duplicating for as many analyses as I need to do. So that's a nice little quick trick for creating multiple pivot tables. 
Now we've got about nine minutes left, so we're going to finish up by taking a look at pivot charts and also slices. And believe it or not, despite that delay, we've managed to cover pretty much everything, which is great. So let's take a quick look at how we can analyze uh, using charts. So when we use a chart, we're just basically visually interpreting the data that we have in the pivot table. And a lot of people find a chart a lot easier to read than maybe just simply looking at data. Charts are particularly good if you're trying to compare different items. It's a lot easier to see if it's in a chart. Now, I will say that when it comes to creating a pivot chart, you really need to take a good look at the data that you have in your pivot table and think about what type of chart is going to suit your data best, because not all charts are created equally. And I'm going to show you an example of this. I'm just going to rearrange these fields a little bit just to demonstrate this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove category so that we just have a list of the uh, managers and their sum of sales. So if I wanted to put this data into a pivot chart, what I could do is go up to pivot table analyze and over in the tools group, I have a pivot chart button. Now, if I click on pivot chart, it's going to allow me to select um, all different kinds of charts, and they're organized down into different categories. Now, maybe I decide that I really like pie charts. I don't, for the record, but maybe I decide today I want to put this data in a pie chart. So I'm going to select the pie chart, click on OK, and the day, I've got a bit too much data for this pie chart. It's not particularly easy to see. And because all of these sales are reasonably close together, the, it's very hard for me to see just by looking at the pie chart exactly sort of who's generated the most sales. It's not a particularly good analysis using a chart. And because I have quite a few different managers, I have to make this chart quite big in order to be able to see them all in this legend. So this is a particularly good chart for the type of data that I want to analyze. So think about that. In general, the general rule that I tend to live by is things like column charts and bar charts are pretty much universal. They're pretty good at representing any type of data. Whereas if you have maybe time based data, so maybe we had sales over January to December, those are always nicely represented using things like line charts. I would only ever use a pie chart and I very rarely use pie charts for very, very small amounts of data. So maybe if I just wanted to show the amount of sales by store, because I only have two stores, a pie chart would be quite a nice chart to use to represent that data. So really think about the chart type that you're using before you put together your chart. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to create a very basic bar chart. I'm going to select bar. We're just going to use the basic bar chart just here and click on OK. And that's going to give me my pivot chart. Let's drag this down. Now, again, I have quite a bit of information on here. And what I would say is that when you're trying to visually represent data, don't try to cram as much information into your chart as possible. For example, if I wanted to show this to maybe um, my CEO or maybe some key stakeholders, maybe they're not interested in seeing all of the managers and how many sales they've generated. Maybe they only really want to see the top five managers. So that would be a much better data set to represent in a chart because it's a lot smaller and it's a lot easier to compare. And we're really honing in on what we want to see. So what I would do here is I would go to my pivot table, click where we have row labels, and I'm going to apply a filter. And I'm going to apply a top 10 filter. And I'm going to say only show me the top five items by sum of sales. And items in this case is going to be the managers. So when I click on this, I now see who the top managers were. If I want to sort these, I can do that from here as well. If I click the drop down, I can sort A to Z or Z to A. I actually don't want to do that. I want to right click and I want to sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So if I want to see the top selling manager at the top, I can do largest to smallest and I can see that Spencer Lee has generated the most sales. And this is a much nicer data set to show in a pivot chart. 
Another thing when it comes to pivot charts is you want to make them as clean looking as possible. You don't want loads of things on your pivot chart that aren't necessary. OK, the simpler, the better when it comes to pivot charts. So the first thing I always do when I've created a pivot chart is I come in and I remove any unwanted items. So these little grey buttons here, these are little filters. We can filter our pivot chart, but I actually prefer to do my filtering in the pivot table, which will in turn update the pivot chart. So I'm going to remove these grey buttons simply by right clicking and saying hide all field buttons on chart. I'm then going to click up in the chart title and I'm going to give my chart a name so everybody knows what this represents. So this is showing the top uh, five managers. Oops. Managers by uh, uh, sales. OK, so very, very simple. Other things that we can do here, we have a little legend. Now, sometimes the legend is really useful. It shows you, you know, what each thing, what each bar represents on the chart. In this case, it just says total, not particularly useful at all. So we can get rid of the legend in a few different ways. It is just a text box. I can select it and just press the delete key. Alternatively, if I click the plus icon just here, I can turn off and on different elements of my chart. So I could deselect legend and that's going to remove it. OK, a couple of other little tricks because we are running out of time. Things that I do when I'm tidying up charts is sometimes I like to add data labels as opposed to having this horizontal axis at the bottom. So again, if we click on the plus next to the chart, I can add data labels. And if I click the arrow, I'm going to display them on the inside end of the bar. I can then select those data labels and apply formatting. So if I want to change the color, maybe I want to make them white, I can simply go to the home ribbon and make those changes. I'm just going to make these bold so they stand out a bit. So if I have data labels on each bar like that, it really means that I don't need this horizontal axis. I can then just simply select it and delete it out, making my chart look a lot cleaner. Maybe I want to make these bars a little bit wider or a little bit narrower. How do we do that? Well, this time we need to right click and we can say format data series. And this allows us to change the gap width so I can make the bars wider or thinner. And there's loads and loads of different formatting options that we have in this right click menu. And you'll find that with your charts, wherever you're clicked, for example, if I click on this axis just here, if I right click, I can go in and I have loads of different options in this pane for formatting this axis in different ways. So don't forget when it comes to adding items to your charts, you've got the little plus icon just here. You can click on the element and you've got some right click menus and you also have some contextual ribbons, pivot chart analyze at the top, design and format. So many different options. I could select my bars go up to the format tab and I could do things like maybe say I don't want to fill, but maybe I just want a nice outline around the outside. And I'm going to change the weight of that outline to something like that. Now, in this case, that doesn't look particularly great, but hopefully you get the idea. I can remove the grid lines, select them, press delete, makes it look even cleaner. Now, this looks too hideous for me. I need to fill that with something just to feel OK with myself. There we go. That's a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing you might also have noticed is that when you create a bar chart, because we've sorted this, notice that the chart shows the actual managers in a different order to what we have in the pivot table. It kind of reverses them in the pivot chart. Now, um, I'm not sure why it does that. If somebody knows, please tell me. I'm not sure why it does, but it seems to put the uh, one with the lowest value at the top going down to the one with the highest value, even though we've sorted them the other way around. But what we can do is click on the axes, right click and say format axes. And in here, right at the bottom, we can choose to show the categories in reverse order. And that just makes them match up with what we have in the pivot table. 
Okay. Now there is loads and loads of formatting that you can apply to tables. I am not going to have time to go through any more about that with you today because there are a couple of other things I want to show you before we finish up. I'm going to run about five minutes over. If you need to leave, I fully understand. If you can hold on for five more minutes, then please do. The next thing I want to show you is just how you can very simply add interaction into your pivot tables and pivot charts using slicers. And a slicer is basically just a visual filter. So what we can do is we can click on the pivot chart or the pivot table, go up to the analyze ribbon. And in the filter group here, we can choose to insert a slicer. And we can insert slicers for any column heading that we have in our data. So maybe I want to insert a slicer for, let's say, the store and the town. Click on OK. And it's going to give me these little visual panes that I can put somewhere on my worksheet. And I will say that if you're doing this, you probably want to leave a bit of room maybe in the column A to place these slicers. I'm just going to put mine over here. I'm going to resize this one. I'm going to put this one underneath. And I've got loads of towns, so I'm not going to be able to fit them all into this slicer in a nice fashion, but we can scroll through and see them all. Now, these are linked to our pivot charts and our pivot tables. So if I want to filter all of this data and just see the information for Computech, I can simply click on the slicer and it's going to update. I've got a little clear filter button at the top here. I can click on something else. So maybe I want to see the analysis for the store microworld for, um, let's say, the town bath. Um, and I can hold down control and select more than one, three different towns like that. So this is a really nice interactive way. So if you send this to uh, other people who aren't particularly familiar with Excel, this makes it really nice and easy for them to filter the data and extract out of it what they're interested in in a really nice and visual way. Let's click on the cross and click on the cross again. OK, again, we could go a lot more into slices, but I'm going to leave it there for the time being. The final thing to show you is simply how we can update all of our pivot table data with the click of one button. So if we go back to our store data, as I mentioned, this store data runs to June 2019. Now, this is sales data. So it means that in the month of July, on July the 1st, I'm going to have another bunch of data to add into my data set. And what I've done is I've just put that data on the July data tab. Now, because we put our original data in a table, this is going to be so simple. All we need to do is take our new data and select it all. A quick way to do that is to click inside Control A to select everything. And we're going to do a copy and a paste. Control C to copy. Let's go back to our store data, click in the last row, Control V to paste that in. Now you might find that you've got your column headings in there. We can simply delete out that row. But effectively, this data has become part of the current Excel table. And what that means is that because it is part of the sales data table and all of the pivot tables and pivot charts that we've built are based off of the table name sales data, all we need to do is refresh the pivot table and it will pull through that new data and update the pivot table and the pivot chart. So how do we refresh? Well, we click in the pivot table, we go up to pivot table analyze and we have a refresh button just here. And if I click on refresh all, Hopefully you saw those numbers changed and the pivot chart updated to reflect that new data as well. Now, if we hadn't put our data into an Excel table, it wouldn't do that. We wouldn't be able to click refresh. We would have to go in and reselect the entire data range, which is a bit of a pain. And that is why it's so important to put your data set inside an Excel table prior to creating your pivot tables. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.